And welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 2272, substring with the largest variance. At the time of recording, this is Amazon's number one asked interview question, so definitely one to know if you have an interview coming up with them. The variance of a string is defined as the largest difference between the number of occurrences of any two characters present in the string. Note that the two characters may or may not be the same. Given a string S consisting of lowercase English letters only, return the largest variance possible among all substrings of S, and a substring is a continuous, sorry, contiguous sequence of characters within the string. So let's think about some of these substrings we can build here, and I'm not actually gonna go through all of them because there's just too many and it's a waste of time. So we could have something like A, we could have AA, we could have AAB, we could have, you know, BA, we could have B, A, B, and we could have B, uh, A, B, 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 um, right? So let's think about the variance here. So remember that it's the differ difference between the count of occurrences of any two characters. So for A, obviously there's not two characters, so it's zero. For A, A, both A show up one, so it's one minus one, so this is also zero. For A, A, B, we have two minus one, which is zero. For BA, we have what? This is one minus one, so this is zero. BAB is two minus one, which is zero. Here, we have four Bs and one A, so this is three. And this is actually our best solution here, this three. Um, if you were to go through all of them, you'd, you'd get that this is the best one because it has the maximum variance. Now, this question is actually relatively simple, and the way that we did it here is actually very similar to how you want to do it. Basically, what you want to do is you want to pick two characters in your substring. So basically, all combinations of characters you can build. And you're essentially just going to be calculating the difference uh, that you can build in that string. So the algorithm here is going to be as follows. So you're going to pick, uh, pick two characters, uh, A and B. And this is literally, you know, A and B. Uh, not not the actual letters a and b they're just the variables where a uh, does not equal to b uh, because obviously then the difference is always just going to be zero so you're going to pick those two characters and you're going to get the counts as you go through the string so um, you know go left to right over the string um, and you're going to count the occurrence right count uh, occurrence of each character. So basically, if the current character equals either A or B, then you're going to increment the count. And at each point, you're actually going to take the difference. Um, and basically, this is a greedy approach where we basically just try to increase the um, size of our substring here. And we'll essentially just try to build the biggest one we can. So this is actually very similar um, in an algorithm to, I think it's maximum subarray, where we're going to be using Cadane's algorithm. And uh, essentially, this is what we wanna do. Now, in the actual example, you'll see that we can actually get characters that aren't A and B. We can actually have any English character. So we basically have to do, for every combination, we have to go through and do it, right? It's not just A and B. We have to do for every possible combination we can build, which actually makes our problem uh, a lot more complicated because we're not just looking for two characters. We have to look for literally every uh, single combination of A and B. Once we've chosen you know, those two characters, A and B, then we can actually go through finding the counts and trying to find the, you know, the largest difference we can find, which is our variance. So I guess the third step is to get, um, get the difference uh, between you know, C of A and C of B. So that's the general intuition of the algorithm. We're not gonna go through an example because it's gonna be way too long, um, but essentially, let's not actually go to the code editor because if I tried to draw this out, it would probably be a 15 minute drawing. It's gonna get messy, gonna get ugly. Let's actually just go through the code. It's a hard level question. You should be able to, at this point, if you're solving hards, uh, look at the code and kind of understand how it works given the kind of general intuition that we wanna go with here. So now let's actually go to the code editor and type this up. Okay, we're back in the code editor. Let's type this up. This one's relatively complicated, so let's walk through it. The first thing that we want to do is actually count all of the occurrences of each of the characters in char. So we're going to say counter is going to be collections.counter of s. And you'll see why we need this in a second. 
We're going to now define our result, which is going to be zero because we haven't done any processing yet. Now what we want to do is we also want to go through all of the possible permutations of two characters within our string. Remember that we need to calculate the, um, the maximum variance, which is the difference in the counts between any two characters uh, in a substring. So we need to do that for basically all the possible um, two combinations, right? So we're going to say for char1, char2 in iter tools dot uh, permutations. So we're going to pass in counter and two because we want to do pairwise. And now what we need to do is get the counts of both of those characters. And I'll explain what we're going to do here with these counts in a second. So we're going to say char1 count is going to be counter of char1. We're going to say that char2 count is going to be counter of char2. And we're also going to say the difference is going to be zero. And we haven't seen either of these characters. So we're going to say scene char1 equals to scene char2 equals to false. Now, what we're going to do here is remember, we want to calculate and find the maximum difference between the count of two characters. So we have char1 and char2. Obviously, this is going to be maximized when char1 is as large as possible and char2 is as small as possible. Then this difference will be maximized. Now, obviously, you could rearrange this and say char2 minus char1. And this could actually be the best answer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to consider both of these combinations, char1, char2, sorry, char1 first and char2 first. And what we're going to do, in, we're going to assume that char1 here is actually going to be the bigger one. So if we ever get to a point where char2 actually has more characters than char1, then we know that this difference will not be optimized. So given some other conditions, we may actually just need to move forward based on what's actually left in the rest, right? We want to consider uh, that char1 will always be greater than char2. And if not, then we'll handle the case when char2 uh, is actually greater than char1 uh, because we have the permutations. So we'll get both of these, uh, the combination of these two and the order that they can be in. The reason that we do this is because trying to do both at the same time is a big pain in the ass logic wise and doing it this way is much more intuitive. And even though you can probably save a little bit of uh, processing by handling both uh, cases at the same time, it's just much more confusing and it's easier to explain and wrap your head around if you just do them separately. So that's what we're going to do here. So essentially, we're trying to maximize this difference here. And we're always going to be assuming that the character that we have char one is actually its count uh, is going to be greater than char two. And if that doesn't hold true, then we can actually move forward um, in the processing um, because we'll handle the reverse case where actually char two is greater than char one later on when we get through this for loop. So that being said, now that what we want to do is actually go through the the um, characters here and process them. So we're going to say for char in our string here, what we're going to do is we're going to say if the character is not in uh, char one or char two. So basically, if it's not char one or char two, we don't care. We just continue because it doesn't help us. Right. We we're only concerned with the counts of char one and char two. So we just move forward. Now, what we want to do is what happens uh, if our difference is actually uh, zero or less than zero, right? So the difference represents the difference between the char one count and char two count. If the difference is below zero, this means that char two's count is actually greater than char one. Remember, this isn't what we want. We want char one to actually be greater than char two because we'll handle the reverse case where char two is actually greater uh, when we get through it later on in our permutations, um, you know, generator here. So if the difference is actually less than zero, then what we want to do is we want to check, okay, are there more char ones? Because if there's more char ones left for us to process in our string, then char one could make a comeback and get the difference greater than zero. If there's no more char ones, then our difference will stay uh, negative. Therefore, we just want to move forward. We would just want to get out of this loop because we know that this combination uh, with char one first and char two second won't work. So we're going to say if not, um, let's see if not char one count. So if there's no more char ones, then we just want to break because we know that we can't go any further. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check if not uh, char two count. So if there's no more char twos, then that means that our difference will actually uh, it could potentially improve based on how many char ones are left. 
because we just checked that char1 is actually um, existent. Therefore, uh, we want to just check whether or not adding the rest of the char1s would actually give us a best result. So we're going to say res is going to be max, whatever our current result is, um, and the difference plus the remaining char1 count. It might be the case that we can just take the rest of the char1s uh, in the string and then just go forward with that, and that would be our best solution. But we don't know, that's why we need to check. So at this point, we can also break because there's nothing else for us to do. There's no reason for us to process. We know the remaining char1 count, and then we can simply add it. There's no reason to process the rest of the string. Now what we want to do is we want to basically at this point, we know that the difference is below zero. We know that we have more char ones uh, and we know that we have char twos left. So what's going to happen now is because char two is actually greater than char one in this subarray, we actually don't want to consider it because remember, we're only considering subarrays. Um, that will actually give us a maximum here. So we want char one to be as big as possible and char two to be as big as possible. So our current sub or uh, substring, sorry, um, at this current time has char two greater. So we don't want to consider anything that we've seen so far. So we're just going to say scene char one equals to scene char two equals to false. So we're just going to say we're going to ignore everything we've done so far. And we're going to reset our difference to zero and maybe we can find something better uh, later on to the string. So this is like the complicated case when the difference is actually below zero. The rest is quite easy when we actually just see char one or char two. So we're going to say if char uh, equals to char one, what we're going to do here is obviously we've now seen char one. So we're going to mark it as true that we've seen it. We're going to say the char one count uh, oops, char char one count, we're going to decrement it by one. Because remember, we have the count of char one of the entire um, this entire string. Now we've seen a character. So the remaining char ones in the string uh, is obviously going to go down by one because we've just seen one. And then our difference remember that when we see char one, we increment it by one. Now we're going to say if char equals to char two, whoops, char two, what we're going to do is we've now seen char two. So we can mark it as seen, we'll mark it as true. And we're going to say that the char two count, the remaining count in the array is going to in the string is going to go down by one because we've now processed one. And we now decrement the difference by one. All right. So the last thing that we want to do is now that we've gone through one more iteration of our loop, we need to check whether or not our current uh, result is actually going to be a maximum. So we're going to say if we've seen char one, and we've seen char two, then we can actually check for a maximum because remember, char one and char two need to be both in our uh, substring for it to be a valid substring that we can take the variance of. So we're going to say the result is going to be the maximum of whatever the current result is and whatever the difference is. And we're going to check if that actually gives us a better solution. So last thing that we want to do is uh, once this loop finishes, then we simply want to return uh, our result here. And hopefully I didn't mess up my indentation because I can't actually see the top and it looks fine. And that is actually our solution here. So let us run this. And it looks like we're okay, no syntax errors, and submit it. And please don't make me remake the video. Come on, leak code. All right. Moment of truth. Okay, accepted. Perfect. All right. So now that our solution was accepted, let us now pause and talk about the time and space complexity. So now that our solution was accepted, last thing we need to do is talk about the time and space complexity. So let us think about the time complexity here. So we have a counter here. Uh, which is obviously going to take big O of n time uh, to actually just go through the string and get those counters. Then we have our permutations here. So let's just call it a uh, big O of P. Uh, whoops, big O of P to generate all of the permutations, right? I don't remember the permutations formula off my head, but we'll just call it uh, P for now. And then within each permutation, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically in the worst case, go through every character in the string. So that is going to be multiplied by big O of n. Um, so that means that our total time complexity, we can ignore this big O of n because asymptotically, this multiplicative part will be bigger. So it's just going to be big O of p times n, uh, where p equals to number of permutations of size two. Um, and then we also have um, n 
equals the length of, of the string, right? And then for the space complexity, we just need to store the counter here. So in the worst case, there are going to be at a maximum, I think the, let me just double check here. I think it's just lowercase English characters. So what that means is that um, worst case scenario, we have each one of the characters. Um, so it's going to be big O of 26. And this is just going to be big O of one because obviously there's only 26 characters that we could possibly have. So that is your space complexity, big O of one. For the time complexity, um, this could technically be big O of n because the number of permutations of size two is known ahead of time. It doesn't really matter what the um, number of distinct characters is. It's always going to be uh, 26, you know, permutation two, um, which is a known number up front. Uh, so technically you could say that generating this part is actually constant time. Um, but just to be safe, we're just going to call it uh, big O of P where P is the number of permutations, um, just to be safe, because I mean, technically that number is known ahead of time. So you could say that it's constant, but again, just to be safe, we'll just call it big O of P, but for the space, the maximum count, uh, keys here is going to be 26. So we can just call it big O of one. So that is your time and space complexity. Hopefully you enjoyed this problem. Uh, if you did leave it a like and a comment on the video it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.